What's up everyone, Don here, and welcome to a new playthrough. This time, it's Cuphead. Originally released on the Xbox One and PC in 2017, then later released on the PS4 and Nintendo Switch. I'm going to be playing the PS4 version. And I'm going to be tackling this game alone because I have no friends. And also there's no online multiplayer feature, which is really bizarre. This game and River City Girls, the first one, would have benefited from online multiplayer, like seriously. The story of Cuphead follows Cuphead and Mugman, two naive brothers that got in over their heads. As they went to the wrong side of the tracks like a bunch of knuckleheads, the two end up on the devil's doorstep. You could call it Sin City. Oh wow, that was a really bad joke. Or is it? Because this game focuses on the dangers of gambling. The house always wins. And here's the house. It's the devil himself. Don't ask me how the devil manages to own a casino in hell, this is just the world of Cuphead. <laughs> anyway, the devil is tempting the young boys to play some more, so the boys, or rather Cuphead, the moron, <laughs> takes him up on the offer, and it all goes downhill from here. You don't play dice with the devil, it never works. Now the brothers are the Devil's Loan Sharks, and their mission is to collect the souls from the citizens of Inkwall Isle and return them to the Devil. Collect their souls for me and I just might pardon you two mugs. Now get going! Well rude, looks like it's time to run and gun like a maniac. What's a fine pickle you boys have gotten yourselves into? I know you don't want to be pawns of the devil, but if you refuse, I can't bear to imagine your fates. You must play along for now. Collect those contracts, and you best be ready for some nasty business. He's not wrong, this game tends to get very, very vicious. Your dead or friends won't be very friendly once you confront them. In fact, I expect they'll transform into terrible beasts. Take this potion so they won't hang you out to dry. It will give you the most remarkable magical abilities. Now go to my writing desk and use the mystical inkwa there. You need to prepare yourselves for a scrap. There's a tutorial here to start you out. It's short and simple and you even get a free coin from it. I'll explain the coin in a few minutes. But here, now the tutorial like I said, it's easy. If you can't pass this, then congratulations, you're a journalist that should probably play more running guns. <laughs> the rest of the game, not so much. It does get harder from here. And you have to master the parry system. How the parry system works is you have to double tap the jump button. You have to make contact with anything that has the color pink in it. And I do mean anything with the color pink in it. It's really, it's really kind of finicky, but you'll get the hang of it eventually. Hey fellas, looks like you're in for it now, eh? Well, I used to be the same way, always getting into trouble. Running, jumping, shooting, but now I prefer just strolling around going to the pictures. But hey, let me give you a hand. Take this. This guy will give you three coins for free. It's a good starter for Pork Ryan's Emporium. Now, the first thing you want from Pork Ryan's is the enemy chaser. That way you can focus on avoiding attacks and staying on the offensive. It's weaker than your standard shot, but it's worth it for the majority of the game where millions of things are flying at you at mock speed. And to get more coins, you'll need to search for them in the running gun stages. That's going to help you unlock more weapons and items. You do have to equip your weapon in the menu. Don't forget to do that, because I sure as hell did. A few times, actually. <laughs> Now, the appeal of Cuphead is the plethora of bosses you have to encounter, with some regular quote-unquote stages in between. In fact, this game is the record holder for most bosses in a run-and-gun game, a record originally held by Alien Soldier on the Sega Mega Drive. Anyway, here's what I would say half of the... Well, it's not even really half, it's more like 20% of Cuphead's gameplay is the run-and-gun sections. This first stage is not too bad. You do have some light platforming, but it's by far the easiest stage in the game for 
obvious reasons. Oh, trust me, this game will get way, way harder. Here's the enemy chaser in action. It has good homing, but whenever there are several enemies on screen, the tracking may go wonky. It's one of the best weapons in the game next to the spread shot, which will be shown off later this part. You got these pink spike balls that can be bounced off of, and there are also these running flowers that can tackle you, and these uh, mushroom things that will shoot noxious gas at you. Some of them are pink. You also got these blue gumball characters running back and forth that can't be killed. You can shoot them and they'll melt, but they'll regenerate. The mini boss of this stage is spawning these acorn bombers. You shoot it, then move out from underneath the acorn, shoot it, move out of the way. It's a warm up to what's to come. You got a couple more platforming sections left with these discount piranha plants. And that is stage one. It's pretty simple. And this is one of the few times I get an A plus rank. Cuphead has a ranking system pretty much like a Sonic game. The score is based off how many times you parry, how much health you have, time, skill level, basically how aggressively you play versus defensive play, and if it's a running gun stage, how many gold coins you collected. Now that I beat that stage, the bridge opens up more of Inkwell Isle 1, but first I'm going to get the spread shot. <laughs> okay, you're going to see the spread shot a lot sooner than I expected. It's a great weapon for up close and personal shooting, does decent damage to bosses, but the bullets don't travel all the way across the screen like you expect. So aggression is key for this gun, and knowing your hitbox too, that's a factor. The first boss I'm tackling is the root pack in Botanic Panic. Time to eat dirt basically. No, this boss is actually not that hard. The first round is with Sputter. His patterns are very easy to predict. All he does is spit dirt at you. And with the last patch of dirt, it's not really dirt at all. It's just a pink snake that you can bounce off of. The pattern gets faster, but that snake will always be there at the end of each attack. The standard shot is probably the most effective against Butter. He doesn't move anywhere, so landing your shots won't be too much of an issue. Oh, he's already dead. <laughs> okay, the next guy is Oli Bulb. And here's a tip for this guy. Don't shoot him. By leaving the Onion B, he'll skip the second form of the fight, which is basically Ollie Bob crying tears of pain, which will hurt Cuphead and or Mugman. The third and final root fetchable is Chauncey Chutney? Okay, that, that is a weird name. Um, he'll spawn this spinning radish that will chase you on the ground. Chauncey will also shoot these manager carrots and these uh, psychedelic rings at you. You need to shoot down the carrots and avoid the rings completely. Um, with the spread shot, it will cover all your bases. It will take out the carrot missiles instantly and does massive damage to Chauncey. You could do a special move by pressing circle, B, or A depending on the console. And that special move differs depending on what weapon you're currently equipped with. For example, the standard shot is just a large blast cannon that goes across the screen. The Spread Shot's weapon special shoots 8 spikes in every direction that you can aim in, so it's worth a while to check out every weapon's strengths and weaknesses and see what works for you. Come on, Chauncey, you psychotic bastard. This is the boss you want to start out with. There's also the other boss to the north, which is not so bad, but you want to deal with him second. There we go, the root pack is down. A lot of these bosses will start to feel like Dark Souls bosses after a while. I did good on that round, but I took a hit somewhere down the line, so... A plus rank, gone. Oh man... <laughs> That's not that big a deal. Now the game does have a sort of difficulty select before a boss. There's simple and then there's regular, and honestly I never played the game on simple, so I don't know if the bosses change that drastically. You may want to give it a look sometime. Uh, I'll be a monkey's uncle if I'm putting my moolah on the bank. For all I know, the devil probably controls that place too. They'll never get a hold of my gold if I spread it all around, and if some Joe happened to find a coin or two, good for him. That's what I say. Uh. I'm getting way too invested with the 1930s motif. That was his way of saying, get coins please. About the difficulty of Cuphead. This is a hard game, but I've played way harder. Way, way harder. 
This is not good. This is not good at all. Yeah, the arcade version of Gradius 3 is not fun. <laughs> the Super Nintendo version is a way better experience, but the arcade version is rough. Anyway, this is Scooby LaGrande, and his first form will have him jump around and trying to whack you in the face. Dash away and duck underneath his decap attack. attack. Now, whenever you duck, your hitbox shrinks dramatically. I should have gotten hit there, and it looks like I should have, but I was just barely short enough to avoid that. You can't do that with all the bosses though, so you have to know what exactly you can get away with. Phase 2 of the Cuphead Cinematic Universe, Goopy will right up and do the same thing as ever before, except his headbutt is now a punch out, which you can still duck underneath, so there's really no... There's no enhancement here. Fuck, I thought he was being slick there. I recorded all the deaths and put them into a separate video. Reason being is, I don't want the parts to eclipse one hour, and I also want to show off the more strategic approach to these guys. And like I said before, I do have that extra video. I don't know if I'm gonna post it before or after the playthrough, but you'll see me do the dumbest shit ever. <laughs> or actually get bullshitted by the game itself. Anyway, the final form of Goopy is a tombstone of the poor bastard trying to smash you, much like a thwomp from Super Mario. Just go to the left or right to avoid the attack. The sprite weapon is pretty much the best gun for Goopy LaGrande. You can use the other weapons just fine, but if you want instant gratification, use the spread. First two bosses are down, that means the kick gloves are off. The next boss is a total genre shift. Not only is Cuphead a running gun game, but it's also a side scoring shooter, akin to games like Gradius or UN Squadron. And this boss is the true, the first true kick in the pants for players. What's that? You two want to fly in a plane like I do? Ha! You're not sitting in any cockpit till you study those blueprints. And here's where we get introduced to the biplane. You have different weapons for these stages than you will for the cuphead stages. The parry system works the same though. Pink things can be countered as always. You have a torpedo as your special move, and the ultra special being that Cuphead and or Mugman will transform into an atom bomb that you can steer into the boss for massive damage. It's pretty epic. Anyway, Hildeberg may give you a run for your money. First couple of attacks, Hilda starts off by laughing at you. And I must have missed the killing joke because these laughs hurt like hell. <laughs> You got enemy planes coming in from off screen firing bullets at your current location. Hilda will also transform into one of three different constellations. The Taurus here is pretty easy. She strafes the screen and ramps across horizontally at random points. You have to look out for where she stops in order to move out of the way. The tiny planes will still be shooting at you during the constellation phases. You'll eventually come across planes that will shoot more bullets at you in a spread fashion. Cuphead's plane has a special ability that makes you shrink. It will make you harder to hit, but your shots will not go across the screen and they will be weaker. Got some damage off of that one. This constellation is, um, Sagittarius, I think. Anyway, the archer is slightly harder than the bull to avoid. She'll shoot an arrow with three star bullets at you, and those star bullets can home in on you, but you can also destroy them too. The screen might get cluttered a bit, but remember to shrink yourself. Hildeberg does have one more attack in her first form, and that's the Tornado. This attack will home into your current location. Damn, I almost made it to the final phase. The game over screen will show off the boss's health bar, even though it looks more like a progression bar. The character running will show off how much damage you've dealt towards that boss. And trust me, it sucks when the Cuphead icon is at the very end of the bar. <laughs> it, that shit happens all the time. The animations in this game are really good. I'm going to say this right now, Cuphead is a really great looking game. It has the 1930s and 40s look, but Cuphead also uses a blend of more modern animation styles. There's also heavy inspiration taken from Konami and Treasure games from the 16-bit and 32-bit eras. Games like Contra, Gunstar Heroes, and Dynamite Hitty come to mind. 
and it's that blend of styles that makes Cuphead a very unique experience. I like 1930s cartoons, when they're not racist, and I like video games from the 90s. Honestly, that should just be a one-hit kill. I don't see why it's not. I should be going on to the final form, and Hildeberg just throws the biggest bitch fit ever. It's kind of hilarious. This game is incredible. Now, the final form of Hilda is very difficult. You'll have a really hard time reading out some of the attacks. The UFOs will shoot lasers downwards, telling what UFO will shoot at what time is key to winning. The orange UFOs will shoot the lasers before you go underneath them, and the red UFOs will shoot the lasers after. With the orange, fly closely enough to trigger the laser but then fly back and wait for the laser to go off. With the red UFOs, just fly past it as quickly as you can. I didn't even get hit on that attempt. Did I just get another A+. Hell yeah! I usually get wrecked on that boss, I'm, I'm, I'm serious, Hildeberg is one of the tougher bosses in the whole entire game. Next up is a running gun stage called Treetop Trouble, and I'm gonna need the enemy chaser for this one. It's kind of, um, it's not that difficult, but it will give you a hard time. This beginning portion will drop several rolling enemies at you. Some of them will even jump. They're kind of hard to aim at, so you just use the enemy chaser to take them out easily. The pink bugs can be absorbed by your parry. Oh no! I cocked up there. What I was supposed to do is bounce off that pink guy to get that coin. Looks like I'm going to have to spawn in another pink guy. Hopefully I don't get that guy killed neither. Damn it! Okay, got another guy to spawn in. Good thing the screen doesn't lock in place when you try to go left, like in some other games. There we go. What I should have done right there was reset the stage, but oh well. Those woodpeckers are invincible. No matter how many times you shoot them, they'll always come back. There's a coin behind the scenery on the right. Try not to miss it, and be careful of the bee enemies that hover in the air. Chaser is really good for these tree stump enemies. They shoot bullets and will likely mess up your platforming. No! I don't know if I could have avoided that. I'm gonna have to say yes, but I'm also blaming the game on that one too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that vertical section was the halfway point of the stage. That's the intended way to get the first coin. You have to bounce off the pink guy when you first see him. And try not to be too trigger happy and kill him instantly because uh, it's a running gun game after all. <laughs> I don't know how I got out of that. I, I should have gotten hit there. The chaser is such a good weapon! <laughs> I'm not really doing anything, but I don't really need to. I will say this again, it is a weaker weapon than the standard shot and definitely the spread shot, but it tracks the enemies really good. This stage is a little bit weird on the whole Contra Waterfall Syndrome. If you fall down the screen too fast, you'll get damage, but... If you just slightly progress the screen downwards to where Cuphead and our Mugman are not touching the bottom of the screen, you'll be fine. It's weird, the camera has to adjust in order for you to get down safely. Outside of the tree, you'll have a bunch of fireballs shooting at you from down below, and the leaf platforms that are floating in the air will get destroyed by set fireballs, so you gotta watch out. To get this coin, you have to go to the lower wooden platform. Those never get destroyed. 
This mini boss is kind of weird. It will shoot fireballs at the platforms and sometimes the fly will shoot straight for you, other times it will aim at random locations. And the hitbox on whether or not the leaf platforms get destroyed is very misleading too. But otherwise he's not that difficult if you can get past the weird hitboxes. Oh, B minus, great! Don't you just love parents that are always like, it's either it's either an A plus or you'll never get into that college you like. I mean, come on, a B is still a pass, am I right? There will be several new power ups in the store, like the smoke bomb and the extra hearts. There are more weapons in the shop, like the roundabout and the lobber, which are gimmicky at best. Anyway. The extra heart will give you an extra heart, but at the cost of dealing less damage with your guns. And the smoke bomb will make Cuphead's dash invulnerable, good for avoiding some attacks. I'm buying both of them because they are really useful for surviving the game. Goodbye. The extra perks are going to be in the charm section of the menu. You'll notice that there's an option saying Super in the menu screen. You won't be getting a dedicated Super until the Mausoleum. But until then, the next boss fight is against Ribby and Croaks. Well Alright, so the fight starts with Ribby or Croaks. I assume Ribby's the short green frog, right? He'll shoot fireballs at you at three different altitudes. You'll come across pink fire fireballs, fireballs, I almost said fireflies, which you can bounce off of, but I don't really take advantage of this because it's kind of dangerous to do with all the fireballs coming at you at once. The tall brown frog, which I still don't know if that's either Ribby or Croaks, will shoot fireflies at you, which will chase you around. Use the chaser to take them out quickly. The first phase does not have that much health. For the second phase, Ribby and Croaks will separate from each other. The short guy will shoot energy balls at you from two different ways, and the tall guy will blow you towards the short guy. And you don't really have to worry about the fan move hurting you, it just kind of blows you to the left side of the screen. This is the only attack for phase 2, you just gotta weave in and out of the energy balls. It's very patternistic. The third phase, however, is pretty intense because there is a lot of different ways you can get killed quickly on phase 3. Took a needless hit there, that's not good. Here's the final part of the fight. It all goes downhill from here. Ribby and Croaks will turn into a slot machine with three different attacks. First, you have to avoid the coins and hit the lever to activate the machine. One of the attacks is a bouncing ball attack which is relatively harder to dodge compared to the other patterns that could pop up. It gets faster and it gets a bit harder to judge your jumps. There's no rhyme or reason to which pattern you'll get, it's uh, more or less random. Hell, you might even get the same pattern four times in a row. This pattern is just a platforming challenge. Just like with the balls, the platforms will get faster and faster that keeping up with the speed will become a chore. Like right there. Let's play that one back, shall we? There is another attack for the final phase, which are fire platforms, which goes high across the screen or low across the screen. You have to jump or stay put based on how the fire comes out.
So wait, are these guys even frogs or are they toads? One of them has shorter legs, which makes me assume that he's a toad, and the other guy has longer legs, and I think he's a frog. I don't know. <laughs> They're just cartoon characters, I guess. And also, frogs are cool. Toads, not so much. Unless they're battle toads, those guys are cool. But not regular toads. They're just kind of like frogs with eczema. There are no pink items to parry in this phase, so you have to rely solely on dodging. And using your weapon specials is really beneficial here. This would be a good case where the blue standard weapon would be better for this situation, but I didn't have that equipped at the time. But the spread special is still effective, even if all 8 spikes aren't hitting the target. Doing a bit better on this run, you generally want to be in the middle of the screen for phase 2. Those coins are a nuisance, you gotta watch out for those things. Ah, it's the balls again. You can tell what challenge you'll get by looking at the slot icons. I will say the music in this game is good, but it's honestly not a soundtrack I would listen to out of context because I'm not a real big fan of 30s or 40s music. But it works for the game at least. Kind of like LA Noir in that regard. Oh good, I got the fire platforms. These are literally the easiest things to avoid. Or at least for me, they're easier to avoid than the other platforms. Ribby and Croaks, they're hard, but if you anticipate their attacks, they're not that bad. And you have to watch out for the coins on the final phase. They, they pop up out of nowhere sometimes. And there's also the fact that you cannot damage the slot machine until you hit the pink lever. Oh no, I'm getting worse at the game, no! Or maybe the game is getting more difficult. There's that too. <laughs> C+, plus, that's um... I'm not sure if the game actually gets to an F grade, and I honestly don't even want to find out. Be gone, spirits! Oh wait, you're real. I was about to hit you with the old parry attack. That's how you deal with ghosts around here. Only a nit would try shooting someone who ain't really there. Speaking of not being places, would you fellas mind moving on? You're spooking a fish. But you are a fish. <laughs> Here we go, the first mausoleum. The mausoleum stages are a nice breather area to get more abilities. The objective is to protect the vase from the ghosts. According to the fish, using the parry move is the only way to defeat the ghosts. Because what do you know, they're the color pink, and everything that's pink has to be parried for some reason. The ghosts start out pretty tamed in the beginning, but the more you go through the mausoleums, the more aggressive they'll go for the vase, basically. Aggressively is what I was trying to say before I got tongue-tied. Their patterns start to become more and more sporadic. Hopefully you've mastered the art of parrying by the time you reach Aw 2, because <laughs> Aw 2 is home to one of the harder bosses in the game. Oh, fucking Wally Warbles. Victory! Gosh, I don't know how to thank you boys for saving me. Where are my manners? I didn't even introduce myself. I am known as the Legendary Chalice. Pleased to meet you. I was searching for magic and got trapped by those ghosts. Speaking of magic, please accept this gift. It should help. There are other mausoleums around Inkwall Isle. I just wonder. Did I read that right? Was she telling you 
that there are other mausoleums and that she just inquisitively says, I wonder, like, she doesn't even know where the mausoleums are. <laughs> that was weird wording there. Anyway, that was Miss Chalice. She's going to be in the DLC for Cuphead as well as in the Cuphead show. I still have not seen the Cuphead show yet, so I reserve all judgment until I actually see the episodes fully. But never mind that. The first super is a massive laser that shoots horizontally across the screen. It does a ton of damage. You just need to have a full special bar to pull this off. What are you looking at? My chip? Ha! It's not my fault. I've been busy fighting off those casino debtors. Now I gotta save up to have my blade fixed. So help me. I wish someone would bust that King Dice one. I'm sure his day will come next week, or two weeks, I don't know when I'm going to schedule these parts for. Don't worry, I won't be taking three weeks off like I was for GTA 3. <laughs> that was that was terrible. I'm, I'm probably like the worst YouTuber ever for scheduling. I will try to post at least two to three times a week just to keep up the consistency. Anyway, this boss right here, he's kind of a dick. His first, or his name is uh, Carnation. I don't even know his first name. I think it was Cagney or something. Uh, he will attempt to headbutt you, which you have to watch out for whether he does it in the air or if he does it on the ground because there are different tells for it. Carnation will also spawn out these finds out of the ground, which can lead to all types of hijinks because you have different things on the ground, things in the air, things near the platforms. It's just a mess to dodge all of those at once. And if that's not enough, he'll shoot either this boomerang or three carrots at you. Now, with the boomerangs, they fly at mid-level over the platforms, then swoop on the ground level. With the three carrots, they aim for your current location, so you gotta be on the move. You can bounce off the capsules that are pink, but they are really hard to parry because of their small size. I'm actually actively avoiding, or at least trying to avoid, everything that can come into bodily contact with me because... Motherfucker, I don't want to get hurt. Is a real high class it's on. The last phase is uh, pretty interesting. You gotta be super focused for the last phase. Here's the run where I actually get Carnation this time. He is tough, which makes sense because he is the last boss of Isle 1. And the hands hurt you. Don't go near the hands. I do like the hand gestures though. It's like he's trying to figure out which hand to shake with. Do I shake your hand with the right one or the left one? Two boomerangs this time. I gotta dodge that. Finally got that parry off. To hell with those capsules, by the way. They're hard to hit. Here's the final phase. The ground level is now covered in vines, which will creep onto the platforms two at a time. Carnation will also spit pollen at you. Blasted pollen, springtime's ultimate weapon. Uh, some of the some of the pollen will be pink, therefore you can parry those. Oh look, Carnation's eyes melted out of his skull. Good! You suck! I hate that boss. <laughs> Let's see what the rank is. Ah, B. Okay, not bad, not bad. Come back for part 2 where I take on Inkwall Autu. I'll see you then. And this part is almost 35 minutes long. Holy crap. Imagine if this was old school YouTube. I would have been on part 10 by now. <laughs> and now they're fighting for their lives on a mission fraught with dread. And if they proceed but don't succeed. Devil will take their 